Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. Here we are. It's Thursday, June 4. It's Thursday. The weekend is right around the corner. I'm really excited. Um, why? Well, why not? You know, I mean, it's another day. <laughs> what can I tell you? Um, Coffee and Headlines. We get together every morning, 1030 live here on Facebook, and then we broadcast, we share the, the live broadcast on YouTube. If you'd rather watch it on YouTube, what do we do? We share news, share stories about things that are going on in the world near and far, and stories that relate to our life, our life here, our life here in Puerto Vallarta as English speakers. If you're new to the show, my name is Paco, and if you're new to the show, please um, uh, write the word new in your comments. Uh, let us know where you are. Let us know how you found out about Coffee and Headlines so that we can give you a proper welcome. And when I say we, of course, I'm referring to myself and my co-pilot, Luna, my kitty cat, who is sitting here, you know, taking notes. You know, she, she doesn't want to miss anything. So as you can see, she is very attentive to everything that's going on. But enough of her, back to me. Um, I am going to very quickly take a look at your hellos. And it's great to see a bunch of folks that have been joining us for quite a few weeks. It's so exciting to see you all. Sue, Craig, Bill, Karen, Reed. Ted, Christy, Dale, Stacy, Kathleen, Jeff, <laughs> Gayoff. I'll always call you Gayoff, Jeff. Yeah, I, I think it's it's inevitable. Or at least let me do it once. Um, uh, yes, we are doing great. And we're doing as good as we can be. Yesterday, I mega cleaned my apartment because um, my exterminator was scheduled to come in and I figured, okay, I have to pre-clean because I cannot allow for the exterminator to see my place being totally sloppy. And my maid is probably going to knock on my door any minute now and say, hey, I'm ready to come back. So um, I, to yesterday was a cleaning day and it felt good to just sort of spend the day cleaning and listening to classical music and uh, and just slept like a log. And it was wonderful. Day 56,892 of the siege, or does it just feel like it? Well, it feels like three centuries for me, Cheryl. So what can I say? Um, uh, let's see, Barbara. Hello, Barbara. You learned from March. Thank you very much. Welcome to Coffee and Headlines. I hope you poured yourself some coffee and I hope you're ready to enjoy some news because that's the first thing that we're going to do today. As always, let's take a quick look at some news. For starters, I want to follow up on a story that I shared yesterday about the first case of COVID-19 in uh, San Sebastián del Oeste. Vallarta Independiente reports today that it was actually not a case from San Sebastián del Oeste. It was a tourist um, that visited from the state of Nayarit. And when this tourist went back to Tepic, that's when he tested positive for COVID-19. So the tourist is in treatment in Nayarit, and we certainly hope that he didn't um, spread the disease in, in San Sebastián del Oeste. Um, although, as we commented yesterday, you know, the spread of the disease is pretty much inevitable, and sooner or later it's going to hit just about every town there is out there. And that's not me being a pessimist. It's just the reality of the way viruses travel from one place to another. Um, I also want to say that Lopez Gatel once again says this is no time to return to um, to being outside. This is still a stay at home and maintain safe distance time. And I do apologize if I repeat this every single day because I know that you've been watching me talk about this um, every single day. And I know that you're an enlightened audience, but I, somehow I feel the responsibility of having to say this over and over again. It is no time to be outside just for the heck of it. It's time to stay indoors and continue 
to ride this because there's still a lot of cases of COVID-19 in our surroundings. This um, next news item is difficult to explain because the headline says the COVID-19 stoplight will be made public once there is consensus with all the states. This was a statement made by the Secre Secretary of Governing, or of Government, rather. Uh, there was a meeting between Mexico City and all the state um, governors, and uh, clearly there is some <clears throat> sense of disagreement and discontent about um, some states taking the lead with their own ways to measure the COVID-19 pandemic. For example, uh, there was also a suggestion that some of the states that surround Mexico City all function under the same set of guidelines, but at least one state, the state of Querétaro, um, seemed to be against this measure. The state of, of, of Querétaro rejected the measure. So I'm going to leave a link to this. It's in Spanish in case you want to explore it further, but you're welcome to take a look at it. I don't think we're going to have clarity on this until tomorrow or the day after, because it is usually between Friday and Sunday once a week that these um, um, guidelines get updated both for the country and of course in our case for the state of Jalisco. So we were, we're going to see how this unfolds. Um, this is something that is also a cause of concern. In uh, the city of Guadalajara, it is reported that three out of 10 users of public transportation systems are boarding the bus without face masks. And I just wanted to show you this because the next headline that I have has to do with the fact that the health officials from the state of Jalisco have said that next to being in a hospital, being in public transportation is the second most likely place in which you're going to catch the virus. Yesterday, we reported that there have been some comments and some complaints to the local bus company saying that the drivers are not turning down passengers that are not wearing a face mask. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to be riding on any public transportation in, in the near future. I simply am not. And um, if you have are particularly concerned about your well-being as it relates to being outside and getting one, from one place to another, I would suggest you stay away from public buses as well. Um, let's see. Um, we also found out today that uh, rapid testing began yesterday in the city of Guadalajara, in our state capital, um, thanks to the importation of 26,000 rapid tests uh, from a lab called Celex, C-E-L-L-E-X. And uh, these have been approved by the FDA in the United States. And um, the, they're going to be implemented according to the Radar Jalisco uh, program, which is this program that we're already familiar with, in which you call a toll-free number if you have symptoms, and they arrange for a schedule for you and a place for you to get tested and so forth. So this is good to know. Um, it is good to know that this is happening in the city of, Jali of Guadalajara, and I can only assume that these tests will also come to Puerto Vallarta in the near future as well. After all, the governor did announce that the rapid testing would be happening all over Jalisco. Now, before I share um, the next bit of news, a little bit of commentary, because um, I want to just give some context to this. In Puerto Vallarta, as in many cities, I am sure, uh, we feel very strongly about businesses and companies and people that we are fans of and we respect. And in our eyes, they are perfect and indestructible and they can do no wrong. More specifically, in Puerto Vallarta, we have been strong defenders of some of our nonprofit organizations. We love to praise their work. We love to raise money for them. And they are absolutely perfect, completely untouchable. And the reality is that nonprofit organizations make mistakes too, and they should be accountable for them. Sometimes the mistakes are deliberate. 
Sometimes they're accidental. I can tell you from my own personal experience that more than one nonprofit organization in this town has wronged me personally. And I've chosen to remain silent because that's what we do. But today I find out, unfortunately, that one of Puerto Vallarta's most venerable and most loved nonprofits has apparently made a mistake. And I certainly hope that this is a mistake that can be remedied. And what I refer to is the fact that in her Facebook, Angelica Galvan Gomez, who is the head children's librarian at Los Mangos Library, has supported some of her uh, co-workers because apparently Los Mangos has fired five workers um, in the recent past and has not given them the, the proper finiquito or um, severance pay as stipulated by the law. As such, these five employees, just as their families, are unprotected in the middle of a sanitary crisis. There is a, a form that one can sign, and these employees are now looking for supporters that are willing to, to sign this form. Again, this is reported by one of the employees of Los Mangos, not by a news outlet. And I know Angelica Galvan very well, so if she's reporting it, I am going to assume that this is true. If indeed uh, the Los Mangos Public Library fired somebody unjustifiably, I am sure that they will rectify. But just in case they don't, I am going to support this. And I'm glad to see that when a nonprofit makes a mistake or makes a decision that is questionable, people are now starting to bring this up to public light. Um, before we dive into our leisurely stuff, I want to take a look at some of your comments, make sure that I'm not missing anything important. Uh, let's see. Um, Tracy Parks enjoyed uh, yesterday's interview very much. We got good remarks from yesterday's interview with the guys of Farm Fresh PB. And, um, oh, another remark to that effect. Again, I, I we are all about supporting small businesses in town, businesses that are struggling, businesses that have a special, unique story to tell, and businesses that the English-speaking community can benefit from connecting with. If you have any suggestions, please send them my way. Um, we're going to try to do this as frequently as possible. And again, um, what I'm trying to avoid is just people to come in and do um, me, me, me type promo. Because again, I've tried to keep these projects, both coffee and headlines, and also my personal website, PacoJeda.com, as free of advertising as possible because I want the connection between you and the information to be as clean and unbiased as possible. With that in mind, please let me know if there's anyone, any small business that you are aware of that you would like to suggest for me. Uh, good morning, Mandy. Mandy, uh, who's leading the Puerto Vallarta virtual pride or um, event, which starts this coming Monday. I'm sure she's going nuts with last minute preparations, but we wish um, the event all kinds of success. As I've mentioned before, I will be doing my own daily live streamings uh, starting on Tuesday, not on Monday. I am going to be talking about LGBT interesting topics that um, have to do with the way uh, the, the gay community has evolved in Mexico. We'll have interviews in English and Spanish and so forth. And I'm also going to be uh, producing the live streams for Hotel Mercurio and for Perro Bravo. Perro Bravo is going to do an excerpt in English of their local production, Buyer and Seller, which was presented at Encanto um, last year, or maybe it was the year before. I don't even remember. And then there's going to be a broadcast in Spanish with Princesas Desesperadas, the very successful parody that the theater company has produced, uh, featuring four Disney princesses uh, that get together 15 years after Happily Ever After and uh, get together to discuss how happy they really are or are not. And this is, of course, performed by four male actors, and it is probably the most successful play 
that Puerto Vallarta has ever seen because it's been around for years now. I forget how many, I think six or seven, and they have uh, sold out just about every performance um, they've done and they've performed in several venues. Um, let's take a quick look. Uh, so scary using public transport? Absolutely. Um, and yes, uh, taxis, I, I, I don't know. All that stuff just encourages me to stay home. And again, I encourage you to stay home. You know, just go out for the basic minimum you need to and then uh, and then come home. Does my housekeeper take taxis? Um, I don't know, but I'll make sure to make, to to finance her to be able to get to my home safely. Uh, she knows that he, she has her full salary when she comes back. And uh, and I will be so happy to see her because I miss her. I hate dusting. Dusting. Who invented dusting? Um, I am having my housekeeper back. I am having my housekeeper back whenever she's ready to come back. I've uh, relearned how to clean my place, but I also realize that she needs to be supported. Uh, she and I had a conversation about this, and I said to her, the moment you need me to deposit any money on your account, just let me know. In the meantime, you let me know when you're ready to come back, and I'll be happy to continue sweeping and cleaning until that moment uh, uh, until that moment ar uh, approaches. Uh, let's see. Um, excellent performance. Oh, th good to hear that. Thank you, Norma. Norma's my cousin watching from Chicago, and, and it's always uh, good to see members of my family tuning in. Uh, the library workers can take their complaint to conciliación. Yes, they can, um, and they, I'm sure they will. I am sure they're going to take this through the proper causes. The reason why I think this is important is because, again, I don't mean to shame Los Mangos here, but injustices happen in for-profit companies and injustices happen in not-for-profit companies. So I am glad to see that... Uh, People that are associated with nonprofits are comfortable raising their concerns. Yeah, uh, last year I was pummeled when I attended uh, an event uh, in which uh, it was the, the chili cookout and it benefited a local nonprofit. And I was pummeled because I published the excessive use of styrofoam in that event and I found myself extremely offended by it and concerned by it. And, uh, and I published a blog article about it and a lot of people let's just say that I'm not the most popular person to some people because I, 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 I raised that concern, but the, our city, our planet, our lives, you know, I mean, we, we all need to help each other make the best decisions we can. And if a decision is, um, is not taken properly, I think it is our responsibility also to share that information with the people involved. Uh, with that in mind, I think it is a good time to start uh, talking about some leisurely stuff. How about that? What are you looking at? You mean you've never spoken with a pickle before? I figured I would stop by today on a Thursday just to let you know that I don't only show up on Sundays. Yes, I know, Sunday fun day is when we're supposed to have a lot of fun, blah, 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 blah. But I can show up any day of the week. And I just wanted you to know that. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Um, <laughs> the pickle, the pickle has, I mean, my pickle, it, it, my pickle has been just itching to come out and play. Um, I'm sure your pickle has been itching to come out and play too, but you know, I cannot do so much. I cannot do anything about how you manage your own pickle. I have to control mine. Uh, and sometimes, you know, my pickle just wants to take a pickle peek. What can I say? Anyhow, headlines. The world will be a better place because Billy Porter, the fabulous Broadway actor and a LGBT activist, is going to be the plant in a brand new movie adaptation of uh, Little Shop of Horrors. There's not a lot of details as for the rest of the casting of the movie yet, 
but I think the world will be a better place simply because this movie is going to be made. Um, and yes, Julie, I just talked about playing with my pickle. I play with my pickle pretty frequently, if I may say so myself. Remember, we, 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 we cut to the chase here at Coffee and Headlines. You know, we don't have anything to hide. You know, we're an open book. Anyhow, um, this is the news about Billy Porter. Um, if you're not familiar with him, um, he is just an amazing Broadway actor. We know him from Kinky Boots. Uh, we know him from a fabulous uh, show available on Netflix called Posts, which um, deals with the lives that drag queens um, lived through in New York when um, the balls, the, the big drag queen parties started uh, taking place. So um, familiarize yourself with him if you want. And um, now let's take a look at this other news item. Volaris, our airline, one of Mexico's airline, is now operating 74 routes, including two uh, co connecting with Puerto Vallarta. Now that uh, we're back in the new normal in which we cannot go anywhere, by the way, um, it's good to know that the airline can get us from our city to another city where we're going to be expected to go nowhere. So if you want to fly from one city in Mexico to another city in Mexico so that you can be um, in a place where you are not expected to go out, by all means, fly Volaris. What can I tell you? Um, I also want to mention that um, today is uh, Thursday, and of course we want to, we want to promote our friend um, Zoe, who does her um, her Thursday uh, live broadcast from Provincetown, Massachusetts. It is it is her with her social distancers. Uh, we had Zoe on the show last week. We had a lot of fun conversing with him and with her. And she's done a lot of wonderful things. She's bringing in special guests. And I believe that um, in this particular edition, she's going to have the incredible Thirsty Burlington as Cher uh, through the social distancing window. And she's going to have her friend so and Roxy and, of course, the cigarette girl. So if you want to tune in to Zoe this afternoon, you're welcome to do that. I also cut a little bit of um, my dear friend Mark Hartman, who is now doing live um, happy hour from five to six uh, from the Encanto website, uh, Facebook page rather. So if you want to hear Mark playing the piano and singing and, of course, talking about um, music, he is a wonderful person to connect with because he is such a scholar of the great American songbook and Broadway songs and, and pop music and so forth and so on. So, and he's an extraordinary piano player. So I will, I encourage you to check out his lives. Uh, he's truly, truly wonderful. Um, and before I tell you who is our special guest for tomorrow, let me take a look at your comments and prepare a screen that I forgot to set up. And now I've set it up and let's see. Yes. It's Mr. Pickle, what can I say? Um, uh, when your pickle itches, it's time to get thee to a doctor. Fortunately, my pickle doesn't itch that way. Um, I'm glad you enjoy the pickle. You know, we never know when pickle's going to show up. What can I tell you? Uh, green with envy over your pickle. You can have a pickle too, Jeff. I can tell you how to have your own pickle and other kinds of um, special effects. It's actually quite habit forming. Sometimes when I get high, I just watch it myself with the pickle on and, uh, and other characters. And I just spend way too much time playing with my pickle. Uh, but I'm talking about the one on the screen, of course. Um, kinky boots today on my memories. Yes, 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 absolutely. Uh, Zoe is great. Her show is fun. Absolutely true as well. And I want to alert you to a slight change that I implemented on uh, our website, PacoHeda.com. Yes, as I explained recently, um, a lot of what we've been posting on PacoHeda.com has had to do with uh, show notes for coffee and headlines. So I changed the layout now, the top of the website shows six articles that are highlighted uh, that have nothing to do with coffee and headlines. These is the kind of reporting that I was doing before the pandemic. And, um, and we also now feature all our topics at the top. 
so you can e immediately jump to the topics that are important to you. And of course, you know, if you go down, you see uh, the latest uh, show notes that we have. And if you enter any one of these articles, uh, such as this one, uh, you can see that the categories are listed on the right hand side of the page. Uh, this is where we show our show notes and a link to the show on on YouTube if you want to watch the rerun there. And all the links that we talk about on every single episode of Coffee and Headlines are listed here. Um, so this layout hopefully is a better layout for uh, conveying a little bit of the variety of information available on the website, a variety that I'm hoping to increase as we're allowed to start going out to places again. Um, I cannot stress enough that we are still expected to stay home for the most part, uh, but uh, yours truly being an adventurous explorer, I'll be cautious, but I will be trying to connect you with the best Puerto Vallarta has to offer in a matter, a manner that is as safe as possible. Um, last but not least, I want to tell you that tomorrow we have a special guest. We're going to be joined by our very own Lynn Rogers. She is a Puerto Vallarta resident and Lynn Rogers specializes in chronic illness. She is a, a, a general psychotherapist and I've had a couple of conversations with her on the telephone and we spoke about the similarities between counseling people that are dealing with chronic illness and dealing with the stress and frustration and anxiety that result from the situation we are all living in right now. So I will leave you with her website. Um, address, which is very simple, lynnrogers.com, L-O-I-N-N rogers.com um, on the show notes so that you can familiarize yourself with her if you want. And if you want to come live uh, with us tomorrow, I certainly hope that you'll have some questions for her. We've decided that we want to find ways to create um, practical knowledge that we can apply in our daily lives to remain calm to remain kind, and to remain positive during these challenging times. With that in mind, um, I am glad that uh, we've had today, and I see that Rita uh, likes uh, the website. I appreciate that coming from you, Rita, because Rita is somebody that has been involved in branding and advertising and graphic design in her life. Rita has... Uh, a very spectacular website where she shows has case studies from past clients and stuff. And it was Rita who sent me a lot of uh, constructive comments about the website and stuff, which I took to heart and very much appreciated. Um, it is great that um, that we share all this knowledge. And for me, it is great to discover all these sides of you that I didn't know about. So anyhow, we're starting to ramble. So this is probably a good time to leave, but not without acknowledging that some of you are excited to see Lynn come in the show tomorrow. That makes two of us. When Lynn shared her website with me, I figured what a great asset to our community and how wonderful it will be to get to know her before. Um, uh, to know her tomorrow. And I'm sorry, I'm looking a little dizzy because I'm getting um, live updates from my friend Angelica Galvan from the uh, Los Mangos Library. Let me take a quick look at what she has to say. And Angelica tells me, oh no, oh my goodness. Yes, um, among the five... Um, people that were dismissed from Los Mangos was Griselda, um, Germán, uh, Germán, I know, Germán, he's been in the library forever, and Don Mario, he's been the maintenance guy for, for years and years and years, so it is very, um, it, it's not nice to hear that Los Mangos has fired these people without giving their proper severance package. I will um, look at for someone from the board of directors at Los Mangos for comment. This is very unfair and it is very unfortunate and very um, not good, not good. So anyhow, um, sorry to leave you on a bad note, but again, um, folks, when you reach out to nonprofits, uh, get your information, you know, ask questions, 
a lot of nonprofits need help, but nonprofits need to be accountable for their actions as much as for-profit institutions, every single one of them. So when you are considering where you are donating money, you have the right to ask questions. You have the right to donate responsibly. So make sure you do your homework. I will do mine and look into this, and I will gladly report on this situation as it unfolds. Again, as always, I, I thank you very much for your support. I was about to say I support you. Well, I certainly hope I support you with knowledge and information and connection and good times and pickles and all the good stuff. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for being part of this broadcast. Your uh, knowledge and your company is so inspiring to me every single day. And tomorrow we'll be back as usual, 1030 in the morning live with Lynn Rogers and more coffee and headlines and stories and good times. And I will cue the little house now because we are rambling. Have a great day.